Welcome back to the sawmill friends. We're down here at the timber frame today. I have two projects I want to get done. The first one involves what's inside of this box. We'll do a quick unboxing here and I'll show you guys what we're going to do with this and hopefully we'll get a good result out of it. And then we'll move on to the next thing I got going on. All right guys, real quick before I take this stuff out, this is not a sponsored video or nothing like that. I bought everything you're going to see today with my own money. So right here we have the first component. This is the gun, the professional foam dispensing gun right there. I think you guys kind of know what's in here based on me showing you that. Let me see, we got some PPE stuff right here. Looks like some gloves and a mask and a few other things. Looks like the instructions are in there also. It also came with a, a pair of coveralls as well to wear. I doubt I'll be wearing those. I'm not gonna be using a whole lot of this today. Then here we have the main ingredient of this little kit right here. I can lift it out. All right, so here is the spray foam insulation canisters. What we're calling canisters today. So this came as a kit, and according to the uh, information on Amazon, this amount of spray foam in this box will cover 240 board feet which is based off one inches on the thickness. So if you think about that, the same way you do square footage. So this right here would cover 240 square feet if you spray one inch on the thickness. I'll leave a link down below over to Amazon where I'll order this one from. You can get smaller kits. I think you can order maybe two bottles instead of this much. If you just want to try it out and see how it works. I thought I would go ahead and take a leap of faith and order a big canister here or a larger kit rather than see how it goes. For 200 board feet, or 240 board feet rather, and the sprayer and the cleaner so you can reuse the sprayer and all this stuff, I think this was just over $230 maybe, something like that. It wasn't too bad. While I was down here, I've been putting fiberglass insulation, but there's a lot of exposed metal above this wall. There's also a lot of metal in the main timber frame here in the middle. And before I put fiberglass over that metal, I want to cover it up with this right here so the metal doesn't condensate and get the insulation wet. It prevent, uh, what's that called? It, it uh, creates a, uh, a thermal break. I think that's the correct word right there, a thermal break. That way your, your warm or your moist air inside your climate control building does not go through your walls and condensates on the metal, which will get the insulation wet, and create mold and all kinds of just a mess. It creates all kinds of problems. All right, friends, this is the metal we're going to put it on, and it says on the instructions to moisten the surface before you spray it. It also says to make sure the surface is clean. So I got my shot vac and went over all this before we got the water bottle out. actually worked pretty good it's going on pretty easy actually took me about two seconds to adjust the flow and after that I was good to go
guys, the first wall is done. And I'll be honest with you, the first can, I was kind of getting used to the spray. That's why on that panel right there, it's a little bit thicker, not as uniform there on the consistency of it. And once I figured out to unscrew that and give it more air, it really came out a whole lot better. And it was kind of fun to use actually. It went on pretty easily. These right here look pretty good, I think. I was also able to do that area up there that's not framed in. I'll probably put another layer because right there at the top, I need that to come out and cover up that gap between the uh, metal siding and the rafters. But all in all, friends, I'm impressed. That's not too bad right there. And one third of the price of what I would have paid a contractor come in here and do the same exact thing. All right, friends, I've got about four cans left. I think I'm gonna quit spraying the insulation for the night. I actually went up to the house for a couple of hours to let it kind of air out down here. That stuff has a pretty strong odor to it once you start spraying a lot of it. But now it's about, what is it? It's about seven o'clock. We've got something else to work on. Let me show you guys what we've got going on now. Friends, what we're looking at right here is a metal pegboard. In my old shop, this is going back to about 2018, I guess, before we moved over here, I had a large pegboard for a lot of my hand tools. And I really liked that way of storing them on the wall, but it was made of that cardboard material and it just was just junk. You know what I'm saying? Those uh, cheaper pegboards that are made out of MDF, I think that's what they're made out of, if you pull too hard or your tool catches on a hanger, it would just strip it right out. You know, you gotta, you have to be very delicate with those ped boards and removing your tools. Hopefully this one right here will be a whole lot better. So when I started thinking about organizing my tools down here in the shop, I knew I wanted another ped board, but I thought there might be something better out there. And lo and behold, Amazon had this right here. And this is, once again, let me reiterate, not a sponsored video, I bought this with my own money. It was kind of expensive, I will say that. It was $137, but there's more than one panel. You actually get three of these, plus all the hangers that go on them. But here's something to think about. I know it's expensive. You know, you can get a four by eight pegboard at Lowe's for probably 30 bucks. You may have to replace it every three or four years, or it may last longer than that. This one right here, I should never have to replace it as far as that goes. So, as the essential craftsman always says, one of my favorite YouTubers, buy once, cry once, and that couldn't be any more true than right now. This right here was an expensive purchase, but it's gonna be here for a long time. This is my TH Weatherby draw knife. It's one of my favorite ones. It has been restored and it is sharp, guys. It looks pretty good on there. I think it's gonna work out. Well, this one here, I'm not sure who the maker is, it's so old, you can't even see the maker's mark on it, but it's a really good knife. It has adjustable handles as well. I tell you what, friends, I have really messed over the past few years not having these hand tools in a shop that I could use them. I've had these hand tools, guys, stored away in boxes in my old shop up here at the sawmill since 2018. Every one of them has been stored up there. I have more hand tools that are actually restored and ready to work than you guys will believe. Over the next few weeks, you're gonna be seeing them. A ton, a ton of hand tools. What the world are you doing under there, buddy? Trying to find a place to bed down for the night? All right, just so we're using all the space here, or as most of it as I can, I'll put my spoke shades right there between the draw knives. This is my Lee Nielsen Bog Spoke Shave. Another tool right there, friends, that will last you a lifetime. Here's a good one. This is made by the Northman. They used to be called John Neiman. And uh, turn it around the other way. Really nice draw knife right there. This was designed by Greg Pennington. He's a Windsor chair maker down in Nashville. My friend Curtis Buchanan was one of the people that taught him how to make chairs. A really nice knife right there. Another nice spoke shave right there. 
That's made by Caleb James down in Carolina. A really nice wooden spoke shave right there. He also makes the irons for these. He makes the complete tool. A really nice tool. And this one right here is also made by John Neiman. Probably have to use the larger hooks for it. This is my log peeling draw knife right there. It's got a little bit of a radius right there, as you can see. This thing is really nice at peeling logs. I've used it several times over the years. Good fit. So two quick things here, friends, and we'll call this video done. I've got to get up to the house. It's almost, that's almost 11 o'clock. If you're interested in this pegboard, there's a link down below to my Amazon store. You can go check that out. There's also a link down below to the spray phone insulation. So if you're interested in any of those products, you can go check them out below. I got them on Amazon. So I want to thank everybody for watching tonight. You guys hang in there and we'll see you back tomorrow in the next video.